Another very common type of reaction that deals with carbonyl compounds, enols and enolates, is known as aldol condensation. Basically, an enol or an enolate reacts as a nucleophile with the carbonyl counterpart to produce a molecule we call beta hydroxycarbonyl compound and simply known as aldol. And this reaction is known as aldol condensation. Now, aldol condensation takes place under two types of catalytic conditions. We have basic catalytic conditions or acidic catalytic conditions. Now, under basic conditions, the final product is our aldol. Under acidic conditions, the aldol is actually an intermediate. The aldol goes on to form a final product in a dehydration reaction, and that final product is known as alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds, and we'll see what that is in just a moment. So, let's begin by examining the reaction mechanism under basic conditions. Basically, under basic conditions, our base acts as our catalyst. So, we can begin with any type of carbonyl as long as that carbonyl contains an alpha carbon. So, in this case, we, we uh, use an aldehyde, but we can also use a ketone. So the reaction mechanism would be exactly the same if we used our ketone. So in the first step, we have our catalyst, the base, the hydroxide, reacts with our aldehyde. It basically grabs the alpha H atom off of the alpha carbon to form the resonance stabilized intermediate we call the enolate. Now, once the enolate is formed, once this, inter once this intermediate is formed, three reaction pathways can follow. So this enolate can either revert back and form our aldehyde, it can go on to form the enol in which the water molecule that is formed in step one basically protonates the oxygen to form the enol or the aldol condensation reaction takes place. Now, let's take a look at this enolate. This enolate is a pretty good nucleophile because it contains a lone pair of electrons on this carbon, on the alpha carbon. So the alpha carbon of that enolate acts as a nucleophile, but with what molecule? Basically, this is in equilibrium with the aldehyde reactant. If we have some aldehyde reactant in close proximity to the enolate as shown, this will act as the nucleophile attacking the carbon of the carbonyl, displacing the pi bond, placing it onto that oxygen, forming this intermediate here. So, in step one of our aldol condensation under basic conditions, hydroxide reacts with the alpha hydrogen to form the enolate. We form water and this enolate. In step two, the enolate acts as the nucleophile reacting with our aldehyde to form this intermediate. And in step three, our water molecule that was formed in step one now protonates this oxygen to form the final product, our beta hydroxy aldehyde product, also known as the aldol. And notice in step three, we also regenerated our catalyst, the hydroxide molecule. So the question is, why exactly is the aldol called beta hydroxy aldehyde? Well, basically, it's called the beta hydroxy aldehyde because we begin with the aldehyde. If this was a ketone, this would be called beta hydroxy ketone. And the reason we have the beta hydroxy term is because the beta carbon of this carbonyl contains a hydroxy group. Remember, the first carbon after this carbon carbon is the alpha carbon. The next carbon across is the beta carbon. So under basic conditions, if we use either the ketone or our aldehyde, our final product is our aldol. However, if we switch to acidic conditions, 
things get a bit more complicated as we'll see in just a moment. So let's take a look at the reaction mechanism for the aldol condensation under acidic conditions. So in step one, instead of having the hydroxide grab off the H from the alpha carbon, we have the hydronium that protonates the oxygen of this carbonyl, of this aldehyde. So once again, we're using the aldehyde, but we could have also used our ketone. So in step one, we form this intermediate, the protonated aldehyde. So notice we have the positive charge here and the positive charge can also delocalize onto this carbon. Now in step two, we have the water molecule that is formed in step one, basically reacts with this molecule. It deprotonates this H atom attached to our alpha carbon and we form our enol. So this is a major difference between the aldol condensation under basic conditions and under acidic conditions. Under basic conditions, we do not have to form the enol to actually form our aldol, but under acidic conditions, we have to form the enol for the aldol reaction to actually take place. So under basic conditions, the enolate acts as our nucleophile. Under acidic conditions, the enol acts as our nucleophile. Now the enol isn't that good of a nucleophile, at least not compared to our enolate. So that means the enol cannot react with the aldehyde, but instead it will react with the beta acid, this intermediate. So this enol basically takes and uses its pi bond to form a sigma bond between our two carbons. And as in this case, we form this intermediate. Notice that these two electrons basically form a pi bond between this oxygen, this carbon, displacing this pi bond, which then attacks this carbon. And so this pi bond is shown in this section here. We have the proton on our oxygen, so we have our positive charge on that oxygen. Now, in the fourth step, we have the formation of the aldol as well as the regeneration of our catalyst, the hydronium. So basically, the water molecule that was formed in this step now acts with this and grabs this H atom away and we form the final, or not the final product, but we form the intermediate product, our aldol. So this is basically exactly the same as in this case. The only difference is under basic conditions, this is the final product. We can actually take it, examine it, and isolate it. But under acidic conditions, this is not the final product. This is simply an intermediate. Under acidic conditions, we have an acid catalyst. We have the hydronium. And this hydronium will basically protonate this oxygen of our hydroxyl group that's attached to our beta carbon position. And in step number five, by protonating this oxygen, we convert the hydroxy group into a very good leaving group, our water group. And in step five, we have a dehydration reaction taking place. Dehydration simply means we have the production or we have the loss of a water molecule. Basically what happens is in the sixth step, we have to regenerate the catalyst that we use in step five so a water molecule basically takes the H away from our alpha carbon position of this intermediate. And when this is taken away, these two electrons basically attack and form a bond between this carbon and this carbon, and this eliminates our water molecule. So we produce 
a water molecule, we produce, we regenerate our H3L plus and we produce this final product that contains a double bond between the alpha and our beta carbon position. And that's because we call, and that's exactly why we call this the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. The unsaturated means there's a double bond between the alpha and beta carbon. So if this instead was a ketone, this product would be called alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So we see that under acidic conditions, the aldol is not the final product, it is an intermediate, and this aldol will basically react even further via a dehydration reaction to form the final product, the alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde. So in this case, it's the aldehyde, but it can also be our ketone. And under acidic conditions, we see that it's the enol that acts as the nucleophile and not our enolate. For basic conditions, it's the enolate that acts as our nucleophile. For the acidic conditions, it's the enol that actually acts as our nucleophile. So, once again, to summarize, whenever our enol reacts as our nucleophile to form our aldol intermediate, that is the acidic condition. Whenever the enolate acts as a nucleophile and the final product is our aldol, that is under basic conditions. And under acidic conditions, the aldol is an intermediate. It will go on to basically undergo a two-step dehydration reaction in which we form the alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde or ketone depending on what our initial starting carbonyl compound is.